everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're excited to be bringing you another Hallmarkies ranking episode. And uh, we are here to talk about the Hallmark Hall of Fame. So this is a very prestigious podcast that we're doing today. It's very exciting. <laughs> Completely. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Terry's here. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you feeling about doing this uh, Hall of Fame? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hall of Fame is how um, my love of Hallmark started. Mm-hmm. back when I was a kid and uh, revisiting some of these they just don't make them like these anymore these are like old school tv movies yeah and it's really true and and I don't understand because for a while they were just sort of putting the label of hall of fame on on you know one of their movies yeah and I kind of I mean I would rather them do that than just do nothing it just seems such a shame for such a a a, a wonderful brand to fall by the wayside. I mean, when you Absolutely. have something that's been around since radio days, it just seems a shame to not keep it up in some fashion. Yeah. I mean, I think last year's holiday spectacular would have been a perfect hall of fame movie. I agree. I, yeah, I, so. I just don't understand what's the, there must be some reason, but I mean, when they used to give on CBS and then CBS dropped them and they moved for a little bit to ABC Mm-hmm. Because um, I remember watching some on ABC. They went back to CBS and then they yeah. lost their home because at that point, the only people who were doing television movies were like HBO or Showtime or Hallmark right. and Lifetime. They've come back in fa- in fashion, but they were dropped for a while. Mm-hmm. Once it went on to once it went to the Hallmark channel, I think they kind of just dropped the ball. They were just yeah. whatever movie yeah. they had, they would place the label on it. Mm-hmm. It kind of lost yeah, a little I mean, bit of prestige towards the end. Yeah, you could see, uh, like Disney Channel would have TV movies as well, right? Yeah, but uh, but they they were just kind of putting a label on it. But I can't. Yeah. I just feel like it's worth keeping that brand alive, it and I hope like, that that maybe know. we'll see it back. Uh, I don't be, know if it's a really budget nice. thing or or not, because I think the last one was in 2019, right? Yeah. It was a Christmas one. movie. And I think that was actually a perfect, you know, uh, format, like the perfect story to be a Hall of Fame. But I don't know if it's a budget thing because the Hall of Fames were always a little bit more expensive than the regular Hallmark movie. And they always got like big casts for them. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but they were definitely a draw. And I, I think you're right that a lot of people, their introduction to Hallmark was through these Hallmark Hall yeah. of Fame films and uh, that's the case for me with also my big introduction was uh look come softly which wasn't hall of fame but if it, it feels yes. like it was hall of fame <laughs> oh my gosh that was when i became addicted to the hallmark channel yeah because i didn't know i had it until i saw the commercial and i love period pieces and i love westerns and i used to watch a lot of hallmark because you know Hallmark used to just farm out their movies to a bunch of channels and they used to do a bunch of Westerns and miniseries like Hallmark back in the day was not what Hallmark is today. Sort of they had they've rebranded. But once I discovered Love Comes Softly, I never looked back from the Hallmark channel. You know, Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, there was a time when Hallmark Channel had Star Trek on. on oh, uh, yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> So they've gone through many a, a rebranding over the years. <laughs> there was a summer where I spent the entire summer just watching Little House on the Prairie and the Waltons on Hallmark Channel because mm-hmm. I was home and yeah. it was too hot to go outside. And I was like, I'm going to watch my uh, soap operas from when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And you can still, I think, watch those on um, Hallmark Drama. Yeah. So they to... have, yeah, it's amazing that they, of all the shows, that they still have a few repeats. Like you can still watch Murder, She Wrote on uh, Movies and Mysteries. And that show still holds up because I was watching an episode the other day and I was like, I can't believe how well this works out. And this was a show from the 80s, but plot wise, mystery wise, mm-hmm. you know, it's still Yeah, works. and um, uh, Me Too was just telling me the other day that she's gotten into watching Diagnosed Murder on yes. Movies and Mysteries. So there's yeah. a lot of those old shows that- yeah, they work. I mean, they're classics for a reason. They work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I wish. Uh, there's a lot of channels like Me TV that air the classic um, television shows, mm-hmm. and they actually get pretty decent ratings in this era of cord cutting. 
-hmm. And you can actually find MeTV like on services like Friendly or Philo if you cut the cord. I was it on I wish, yes, because I have Philo um, and they have MeTV on there. But I would wish, I wish that there was a channel just dedicated to classic TV movies because that is my sweet spot. Yeah, it does seem crazy that that's not a thing. I know it's like I because they're all sitting on a shelf. If you dig through Amazon Prime, because there was like TV Land for a long time that did all of that, but it seems like that's not a thing. Yeah, but see, I was like, I would love to revisit these because they were so mm-hmm. epic and the melodramas yeah. the mini series of the 80s i would just love yeah. to revisit them see because that's my sweet spot the tv movie and the tv mini series was i raised myself on that <laughs> we weren't yeah. allowed to yeah. do a lot of things we couldn't go outside mm-hmm. you know it was a little yeah. strict of a household this you also had like masterpiece time. masterpiece absolutely on yeah pbs which is yes. still going strong thankfully still growing strong still I, uh, still to this day yeah, yeah. so many favorites i have mm-hmm. on that it's where I started my love of everything British. Yeah. And my British watch- accent that I won't do right now, but it's pretty good. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you watched uh, All Creatures Great and Small? Yes. Oh, it's so good. Isn't it great? It's so good. It's oh. so good. I, I've been listening to your recaps. It's good. Oh, yay. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I think, you know, the best. I, that's a total show that Hallmark uh, movie fans will love. All Creatures yeah, great they really small. will. You know, if you want a little bit more of the drama, there's Pole Dark. There's Downton Abbey, of course. Yeah. You know, more than recenter shows, but. Right. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, let's dive in. Let's talk about it. And we are going to have share some of the picks of our patrons. And Yay. that's something we are integrating into these ranking episodes, which have been so fun to do so far, is that I will always post on the patron group uh, what our short list is and uh, get the feedback from the patrons. If you want to be involved, if you're listening to these re these rankings and you're thinking these people are crazy what is their list then join the patreon and you can have your list uh on the podcast and uh, be part of the discussion uh so let's dive in let's talk about it and my number 12 might be low for some people i don't know it is a favorite uh i have the magic of ordinary days oh really okay number 12 Wow, that's yeah. on my list, but it's higher. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, in fairness, I haven't seen it for a couple of years. Oh, but um, but it you do have a moving story of this woman who's pregnant, who, uh, who enters into this marriage to save face. In the uh, 1940s. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you have lovely performances from everybody involved. Carrie Russell, Skeet Ulrich, Mayor Winningham is yeah. so good in it. So good. Yeah. It's a little slow uh, as far as the, the story, but I, I think uh, it's it's lovely and moving and uh, a little bit bolder in topic than you'd see maybe now on Homer Channel. Yeah. Uh, which is refreshing. <laughs> Uh, this movie yeah go ahead i'm sorry no i i just i think it's it's well made it's certainly Mm -hmm. very well acted and uh, so it had to make my list yeah i this is on my list but higher i love this movie i don't know if you've ever read the uh book it's by uh let me let me scroll all the way up to my notes (laughs) Uh, it's by um ann howard creel she's a really good writer i love this book 
Mm -hmm. There are changes from the um, movie to the book, naturally. And I agree with all the choices that the movie makes, because I think it's, above all, it's like um, an arranged marriage, but it's a love story between these two people coming together. And it's a friendship story as well, because she makes friends with some uh, Chinese Americans who are in a camp because of the war. There's a whole Nazi subplot too. But, and in the book, there's a bit more choices to her decision to marry. And I think the movie does a smart thing by limiting those choices. Because as a reader, when you finish the book, it's up to you whether to decide if she made the right choice or not, which is something that I love about the book. It Mm -hmm. it makes you say, did she do the right thing? And I think limiting her choices and making the husband who Skeet Aldrich plays more likable in the film helped immensely and um i just love it it's old it's an old school story yeah i do i'm gonna tell you this i maybe it's not in right now or whatever but i do love these arranged marriages yeah uh, <laughs> these like these people who don't know each other who get married i eat this up like, yeah one well, time I have a somebody went more of those on my yeah. list so. oh my i eat this <laughs> up i have so many like it's always frontier movies about like somebody went my gosh how many like uh <laughs> What do you call it? Mail order bride books do you have? And I was like, oh, a few. Because I just I just love the genre. Like it always works out nine times out of ten. Yeah. Um, but I just believed their growing connection. Well, and, and there's I a just, real element of forgiveness and yes. uh for oh, yeah, her totally. forgiving herself and uh and all of that that I think is very moving and yeah. uh and is a theme that I think all of us can relate to. And if we haven't obviously been through this kind of situation, uh, I think it's, it's a a moving, uh, moving story. Moving story. totally. Yeah. And a war movie and a period piece. So if you like these like world war two forties movies, like that type of genre, um, I would say this is a solid bet, a solid bet. This is also a great starter too, for anybody who wants to get into Hallmark. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your number 12? My number 12, I went all the way back and I rewatched it this morning because I had a memory of it when I was a kid. But my number 12 is Pack of Lies. And this goes back to all the way from 1987. Now, most of these movies, I believe that we're going to talk about are available on Hallmark streaming service Uh and other streaming services like Tubi and UpTV, Pluto, you know, all those free services too. So basically you'll be able to find any of these if, you know, anybody's curious to check them out but pack of lies is based on a play by hugh whitmore that was inspired by real life events so it's a period piece sort of a modern period piece it's set in london in 1960s and this couple uh ellen bernstein is one of this couple the secret service Mm -hmm. knock on their door and say hey man we think you got spies up soviet spies up in here and terry gar it plays her neighbor and they're best friends and she is one of the accused It's a very slow burn. Um, I mean, Ellen Burstein gives such a a great performance. You forgive her bad uh, British accent. Uh, Also, Christmas plays a heavy role in this movie. Um, But it's a slow burn of seeing her not being able to hand this, like this woman she knew and just lying to her and not quite believing what is happening in her house where they're spying on her, where they're like, could they really be Russians? And then slowly discovering everything she said to her is a lie. And it's really the, uh, it's it's pretty sad too, because it's the unraveling of this woman where her closest friend in the world was just something that wasn't real. And so she starts to question everything. And it's really told through her eyes and the toll that it takes to go undercover sort of to like bust these spies and um yeah it's a it's a bummer it's a bummer it's a (laughs) slow burn it's it is a bummer like Uh that ending like there's a narration at the end by the daughter and you're like wait what um but like it's uh, you know it's loosely based on real life events but it's an old school it's definitely it, it reeks that it was made in the 80s, but it's high quality, but it's definitely a slow burn. So um, it's not a romance, you know, it's a lot uh-huh. of heavy drama, but I think it's worth to put on the list because 
we don't get to see many of these 80 movies anymore, you know, so mm-hmm. to bring in some old school Hallmark movies so yeah. fans we discover or discover for the first time. I'm glad fun. you did. What, um, what's it called again? Pack of Lies. Okay, great. Well, my number 11 is, uh, is a movie that I, I feel like kind of got went under the radar. Uh, it's called The Russell Girl. Oh my gosh, it's on my list as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, it's higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This stars Amber Tamblin uh, as this girl. She finds out that she, she's gotten into medical school, but she finds out that she has leukemia. She goes home to tell her parents and her family, and it kind of brings up all of this old baggage. And yes. I think this, this has some of the finest acting that we've ever totally. seen on we've Hallmark. Got- our Elizabeth Bennett in here. Jennifer yes, Ely. Jennifer L.A., yeah. who is an incredible actress. Totally. And she's good in this. Uh, I mean, the whole cast, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Mastronio is mm-hmm. her mom. Um, and it, it's just a moving family totally. drama. Yeah. I was not, pre- the first time I watched this, like I watched a trailer and I was like, okay, girl goes home and she's got to deal with, something in her past so I knew it was going to be like oh this like maybe a semi-traumatic moment but once this movie gets start right off the bat it's not a secret you know that she's sick right. she has leukemia and you're like okay then she gets home and the story unfolds with her neighbor which is played by Jennifer Ely and then you're like whoa this is way deeper than I thought it, it makes me cry mm-hmm. at certain points it's just such a also a great friendship story even Mm -hmm. though it's not necessarily a friendship but the forgiveness in it and the way these women come together once they forgive I don't want to spoil what the big uh, you know uh, thing was uh, that parts these women but it's it's an emotional roller coaster but it's so well done it's so well acted you know yeah this would be a good one to do for on friendship yes now that I think about it because yeah. it really has those themes totally. and uh uh and yeah another story of forgiveness which is always it's just everybody has people in their life that they have to forgive even if it's not yeah. like serious wounds it, we all have our our wounds of our own and uh and so being able to forgive is is a uh, is a an important step. message and so i think it's yeah. just something that's easy to connect with in a project and what I also like about and appreciate about this movie is that no one is a bad guy. You can understand all points of view yeah. and why people are sad and why they can't forgive or how hard it is to move forward from mm-hmm. this big life altering event. And no one is a villain in this. It's you can understand it completely. And, you know, it's it'll it'll bring the tears, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I don't have a heart and people will be <laughs> and I'll be like, next, you know. Well, you sometimes you have to be ready. And and so often, yeah. at least with modern Hallmark, they don't handle. Yeah, the... they don't go as deep. It is well, true. Yeah. yeah, And they and don't handle not... the emotional stories. You feel like so manipulated and, and that you start to sort of resent it a little bit. Exactly. Like, I don't know, just yeah. a lot of the really emotional ones yeah. like ring faults uh, for me. Uh, and uh, but when Hallmark Hall of Fame was at their best, they got that's that what they did, right? Yeah. yeah. And this yeah. one isn't that old. It only goes. It's from two thousand and eight, so it's not that yeah, old. Like, oh, old. Wait yeah. a minute, it is old. Let me stop. We're in twenty <laughs> years old. I'm like, it's not that I old. Mean, yeah, it's, it's old. not that old, but it but, is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is pre Hallmark Channel. I think totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. so yeah, definitely. What am I saying? Definitely. So, what is your number eleven? My number 11 is The Piano Lesson. I'm going all the way back from 1995. It stars Alfre Woodward, Charles S. Dutton, um, Carl Gordon. Um, It's another period piece. It's based on a famous play by August Wilson. And it's basically this brother and sister, Boy Willie and Bernice. They have this um, family heirloom, this piano. And the brother wants to sell it in order to gain money to buy land. So he can farm, he can own a piece of land. And his sister Bernice is like, no, because the piano was carved with imagery of their families. Their families were slaves. And this uh, piano belonged to the slave owner. And he actually got rid of half of the family in a slave trade for the piano. 
And so the members of those family are carved in the history of their family, uh, the history of, of how they were enslaved. It's a beautiful piano and it's just a wonderful uh, story of their life, of their ancestry and lineage. So Bernice doesn't want to get rid of it. And that's basically the whole entire conflict of the film. Mm -hmm. There's lots of, of people getting together and singing songs, which is um, how they remember their, you know, it's like, um, it's important to show in the film because that's how the, the when people, I'm sorry, when in slavery, in the enslaved people, they would sing their songs to remember their life and their culture and they continue doing that so it's important to touch through that through playing the on the piano and the music but um there's also some supernatural stuff going on with some ghosts to help make mm -hmm. this decision and and to heal in a sense and move on yeah and if you can stand that brother because he is a lot in the movie then i would say check this out it's a beautiful story I think, and I think it's a, a beautiful tale of a family who's dealing with slavery and the, uh, uh, what's the right word, the, the legacy of that, of being descended from slaves. And I think that's an important story to tell. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I was never, my family were not slaves, you know, I'm not descended from, from slaves, you know, I'm also not a, an African-American or right. a black person or whatever. So I'm looking through this you know, outside in, but I could, it's, it's still to me a beautiful story about a family coming together and dealing with w the wounds of all that, mm -hmm. the legacy of it. I'm really glad to hear that this is good. I've been wanting to see it. I haven't watched it, but they did a revival on Broadway just last oh, year mm -hmm. of the piano lesson yeah. with Samuel Jackson. Oh, nice. And so I was like, oh man, I really, I, I really want to uh, and I heard it was great, a great revival. So I really have uh, been wanting to watch this movie. So that's yeah, good to hear is, that. It's there's good. a lot of excellent performances in it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really good. It's mm -hmm. really good. Good. All right. My number 10 is The Lost Valentine. Oh, okay. Uh, this one I almost put on my list, but I also love it. Yeah. Uh, so you have Betty White, who uh, his, her husband was lost. Uh, during World War II, and she goes every year to uh, to the train station to wait for him. And Jennifer Love Hewitt plays this reporter who is uh, doing a piece on it and becomes kind of involved in trying to find out what actually happened to the husband. And uh, I I think it's it's a lovely little little movie. A lovely it's a it's such a nice love story and also Jennifer Love Hewitt also falls in love in it mm -hmm. but it's such a wonderful story too about endearing love and and especially that end is so touching because mm -hmm. they've never found his body too right. and that's why Betty White always waits at the train store at the train station and the conclusion of it and I mean, it was so wonderful uh, it was such a joy to watch it's very touching and um I love the flashbacks. I thought everything worked mm -hmm. well. And it's a good looking movie too. And it's yeah. just, it's really well acted. There is a moment that I had to laugh. Like Betty White is very savvy this mm -hmm. morning. She she does internet. Like I'm talking to my grandkids. And when you look at her computer, the font is so big. And I was <laughs> like, no way. And then the other day I had to raise my font. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going in this direction. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. We, have, we all have those moments. We all have those, like, uh, oh no. those moments to bear. Yeah. And <laughs> so. when you have to buy the orthopedic shoes, uh, oh, I, I, I cross that bridge. Oh boy. I know my feet hurt a lot too. I'm going to have to go down that bridge. Oh man. Oh, uh, back to the movie. It is very uh, sweet. Yeah. It's very sweet. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is your number 10? My number 10 is a Christmas movie and a little bit of a bummer as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm going all the way back to 2013. It's Christmas in Conway okay. with uh, starring uh, Mary Louise Parker, Andy Garcia, Mandy Moore. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, Mary Louise Parker and Andy Garcia are married and Mary Louise Parker is dying. And she comes home and Mandy Moore plays her nurse. She's the end of life, end of care nurse. The hospice, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Andy Garcia is having a little trouble, uh, you know, dealing with this. 
And he wants to give his wife one great last gift and a gesture for their last holiday together. And he decides to build her an honest to God, real life Ferris wheel in their backyard because he proposed to her on the Ferris wheel. Along the way, Mary Louise Parker plays a, uh, a teacher and uh, some student comes up that she, he's like an expert gardener and he ends up helping with the Ferris wheel. And Andy Garcia is a little bit, you know, not really believing in him because he was a bad kid, but Mary Louise Parker fought for him and changed his life. And he wants to say goodbye and help her because she was important in his life. And so there's a little romance going on with Mandy Moore on that end. But they live next door to an absolute Karen, okay? And this Karen is like, oh, but my lights and the house association, she does everything possible, calls the cops or whatever to try to get Andy Garcia to tear down this Ferris wheel. It'll ruin the neighborhood, you know? And he's like, I don't care about you, Biddy. I'm going on. I'm going to build this. I don't care if you arrest me. If you knock it down, I'm going to rebuild it. So I like this movie too, because you don't see anybody die in it. So don't get them tissues out. Uh, not yet, but it's a wonderful story of love, of acceptance um, in a way of, I think a lot of people have to deal with this. You know that somebody is going to die and the dealing, the accepting of it, like mm -hmm. it's going to come, especially when someone's like, because we all die, but when someone is sick and they know right. that their time is shorter, the sort of acceptance and a sort of mini goodbye and the gesture of love, also a bit of friendship as well with Mandy Moore and um, uh, the, I can't remember his name, but the student guy who comes in and helps. So there's also forgiveness and love. And it's, I love this movie because it's so touching. Like Andy Garcia, he can always get it no matter what age he is. Um, but he's so good in this movie and he's so cranky. And I'm like, yeah, you tell off that Karen or, <laughs> you know, off. And so he has to deal with all this, but he's determined to give his wife just a wonderful last holiday because mm -hmm. they're not going to have any more together. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen this, so that that definitely oh, makes this me one really is, curious. This one's a touching Christmas one. It's completely Christmas, mm -hmm. so it doesn't like just have a, a. It's not like a Christmas movie, but not a Christmas movie, like, right? You know. Yeah. This one involves the holiday, but it mm -hmm. also it can get a little teary eyed, you know. Yeah, sounds good. Well, my number nine is uh one that I think a lot of chemistry and it's very sweet. Uh, is Remember Sunday. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. My number nine. Uh, in this, you have Alexis Bedell, and she meets Zachary Levi, who has, it's like the 50 first dates, except a uh, thing where he uh, he can only remember one day. And, uh, and at first, she tries to, she thinks, oh, this operation is going to save him. Uh, oh, but it I turns out, yeah, it turns out he already kind of went down that path, but of course doesn't remember. Uh, and uh, so it's it's pretty devastating, but super super great chemistry, very likable yeah. performances, uh, and the hopefulness you know, in it as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and loving people for who they are, not who you yeah. wish they could be. This is tough though. It's more serious than Fifty First States, but it is. Well, yeah, yeah. It's the the gist. I mean, this mm -hmm. is Hall of Fame. They're all serious. Um, but yeah, it's very touching. And it's <laughs> and you can actually see the struggle of how hard it gets. Mm -hmm. You just, every day, you're re-falling in love again. And um, the struggle of that and how disappointing it can be. And um, it's touching. Mm -hmm. It really is touching. The chemistry is great. It's really nice. I was going to put this on my list, but I was like, I guarantee Rachel's got this one on. <laughs> so I didn't put it on. I was like, I know. I know she's got this one on. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you have a nine. Okay. So my number nine is another period piece. I'm, I'm full of period pieces for this one, <laughs> but it's based on a true story. It's the courageous heart of a, a Rini Sandler. A, uh -huh. a Rini Sender or Sandler. Yeah. Um, it stars Anna Paquin, Michelle Dockery, Gorn Vizhnik. And basically it's again set during World War II and they are in Poland and Anna Paquin is like a, a nurse and um, she helps smuggle Jewish children out of the ghetto. And I think in real life, she smuggled out uh, like over 2000 children 
so they wouldn't go to the concentration camps and they wouldn't die and um so she she does this and eventually she gets uh stopped by the uh, arrested by the gestapo and uh, this harrowing scene where she almost dies but like they manage to to save her so this is based on a true story so you know I don't want to give too much spoilers away, but mm-hmm. there's a wonderful love story too with Goran Vishnik, who um, also gets arrested uh, by the Nazis. And just the bravery, if you think about in real life, what this woman had to do, work with the church, sometimes smuggle these kids out of the ghetto. I mean, death, like she could have gotten caught. Like she saw members that she was working with die being executed in front of her but every day she was like i will save these children and how Mm -hmm. hard it was for the parents to give away those children because what she was doing she was using the catholic charities to try to get them in with catholic families like and the families knew that these children were jewish that they were being smuggled out but were doing all this paperwork to try to get them in so they could have a chance to live like to live out through the war and if they could to be reunited with their parents and a lot of these kids parents died in concentration camps and stuff and the sacrifice that their parents made helped them live so it's a very touching and it's an emotional story and i think it's it's well acted like anna paquin i think as an adult is not as great as when she was a kid, but I think she gives a strong performance here. And I just, I love Goran Vishnik, you know. Um, yes, he's beautiful to look at, but a lot of times he doesn't get the material where it can show his, you know, uh, how well of an actor he is. He doesn't have much to do in this movie, but it's good. And there's so many British, like, if you watch this, like, I'll, you spot the famous British TV personality, you know, actor out there, so. Yeah, the, this one... It was definitely on my short list. This yeah. is a you know very moving story, yeah. and uh, very you know well told. So I can see yeah. why it's a major list. Hey, this is David from the Piecing It Together podcast, a podcast about movies and the movies that inspire them. For over four years, each week, a guest and I take a look at a new movie through the lens of what other movies we think were either an influence or connect in some other way. It's a fun, unique way to discuss films that leads to a great list of other movies to check out that either explore the same themes and ideas or maybe utilize similar filmmaking techniques. Including special episodes in our side series that twist the format, we've done over 200 episodes, so there's bound to be one on a film you've been thinking about and want to dig deeper into. So check us out on all the major podcasting apps and at piecingpod.com. Well, my number eight is is Beyond the Blackboard. I'm a sucker for your inspirational teacher stories. I saw one at um, uh, Sundance just this last year that everybody should keep an eye on for called Radical, uh, starring Eugenio Derbez in this, uh, uh, the poorest performing school, one of the poorest performing schools in the whole like world in Mexico. And uh, that was very good. Uh, And uh, so I just really, that's an easy win for me. uh, In And then this one you have, Emily Van Camp going into this school uh where uh in New Mexico and um and it's a really tough uh group of students that she gets and uh her experiences and and uh uh I just think it's a it's a very good little little movie I've never seen this one Mm. this Mm -hmm. one I've missed yeah so yeah I've i think things, but i've never seen it yeah yeah uh i think that if you like those you know those kind of yeah. stories that it's a inspirational true true story yeah. what what do you have next okay my number eight i went back to the early 2000s in 2004 uh the black water light ship it's also based on a book uh it stars a trio of power house uh powerhouse actresses Gina McKee, Diane Wiest, and Angela Lansbury. Essentially, oh, the wow. story, yeah, essentially, this, it takes place in Ireland. Essentially, Gina McKee, she's a school teacher, and they're getting ready to go on holiday, but her family, like her husband and the kids, go first, and she's left behind. She gets this phone call from her brother, 
And he says, I'm in the hospital. Can you come see me? And she's like, I don't know what's going on. Once she gets to the hospital, he confesses to her that he's gay, but she knew he was gay and that he has AIDS and he's dying. And is this is just knocks her for a loop because she didn't know he was sick. She's a little miffed he didn't tell her. But what he wants to do is to go back to the cottage that they used to go to all the time from their grandmother, who's played by Angela Lansbury. They haven't been back to the cottage since their father died. And so we get flashbacks of when they were little. Their father was also uh, was sick. He had cancer and he died when they were young. So Gina McKee has to arrange all this, but she has to go to her mother, played by Diane Wiest, who's a very, it seems emotional, very stoic woman. And they are very estranged due to when the father died and how everything was handled. So she has to break it to Diane Weiss and she sort of Diane Weiss sort of takes it over. And also Diane Weiss and Angela Lansbury have their own conflict of mother and daughter. And so they're all in this beautiful cottage, you know, in Ireland by the sea, by a lighthouse. They're reliving all these memories. So basically these three women have to come together and forgive the past. It's, you know, and move on for the sake of, you know, the son, brother, grandson. And so it's basically a story about inter intergenerational mother and daughter relationships. And there's just this wonderful moment where Diane Weist and Gina McKay, they're at Gina McKee's house and she sees pictures of her grandkids and she would be like, I would love to know my grandchildren. And Gina McKee was like, I would like that too. And then Diane Weiss just bursts out into tears because she's been holding it back all this time and she just lets it go. And it's a beautiful story of forgiveness of mother and daughter relationships. And just also a beautiful story of no one is angry at him for being gay. I mean, when Diane Weiss goes, he's a homosexual. It's her Irish accent is a little, you know, iffy, but uh, there is no judgment Mm -hmm. you know his friends come over it's just acceptance and love and trying to give him the best comfort that he can for his last days of life so it's a weeper um but it's What's it called again uh the black water light ship mm. it makes me cry i love all these women i'm a big gina mckee fan i think yeah. she should be better known in the states but like when i first saw this movie i had tears in my eyes because uh you know i love the tear i love a tearjerker um <laughs> But it was, I was, cause I have, you know, at that time my mother was still alive, but I had my own issues with my mom that, and you can sort of like, yeah, I've got to deal with them. I don't want to end up being estranged or whatever like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like these women were. And even, that sounds really good. Yeah. Even the issues between, between Diane Weiss and Angela Lansbury, you can see that there's conflict within them too. And I think the daughter is seeing for the first time as an adult and a mother herself that it's more complicated and more in depth than she originally had thought. I mean, cause she cuts her mother completely out of her life. So mm -hmm. when she just pops up, you know, she's out of the blue, like she's got a strange relationship to your kids. So, you know, I mean, it's also like gut punching to just be reunited with your children. And one of them is dying, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Huh. That sounds really good. Yeah. It's beautiful too. Beautiful location. Um, it's a good looking movie. Great mm -hmm. acting. You know, another well, one that you're going to see baby faced British, like, you know, well known British TV actors in it. Well, and Angela Lansbury gets to be Irish because she is Irish and she gets to use her accent. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, my number seven is a more recent one. It's a Heavenly Christmas. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> with uh Kristen Davis. Uh, and it's it, it's a very your um like heaven can wait your right. it's a wonderful life kind of your themes uh that so she uh she gets a chance to uh to go back and uh and uh, be Help an somebody out. Yeah. angel yeah and uh it's this uh single dad uh played by Aaron McCormick and uh Shirley MacLaine is your your angel your guiding angel and it's a bit touched by an angel too yeah <laughs> uh, not exactly the same but has sort of with the angels helping junior yeah. angels sort of aspect of it 
and I think it's really charming. It's, it is. It's, it is quite it's charming. funny. It's sweet. It's romantic. Yeah. Uh, and you know, to our friend Greg McBride is is yeah. the, was the writer, uh, and as he did an excellent job. And yeah, it's totally sweet. It's a great it's Christmas like, movie as well. Yeah, if you want like a classic Hallmark Christmas movie, totally. Yeah, this is this is a really like solid one. Yeah for for so what do you have for your seven my number seven is the russell girl okay yeah we talked about it it's a great it's really movie good. get your tissues out you're gonna love it mm-hmm. <laughs> well my number six is i admit this movie's pretty corny but i still really <laughs> like it is uh in my dreams <laughs> oh yes i knew you would have this in your list <laughs> i didn't put it on mine i was like i don't think this will make mine you know, it might have been like 15 or whatever, but I was like, I think Rachel's going to put this on. <laughs> it is a very fun. It is really good. So it this woman, fun. she, uh, well, the man and woman <laughs> are really frustrated with their love lives and they start having these dreams where they meet in this fountain and they dance and, and, uh, <laughs> and so then they the, the movie is kind of their quest to find each other in real life while right. they're still having these dreams and it's uh, so great they meet really by a good. fountain right in the dream mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so i really i really enjoy it it's very yeah. romantic did, it's very yeah. well done but i can't remember she owns the restaurant or she's the chef of the restaurant mm, i think she's the chef, she's the chef. Yeah, sure. i do remember them constantly crossing paths and not realizing that they were next to each other because mm-hmm. <laughs> they yeah. each other in the dreams i mean <laughs> It's so much fun. Yeah. It's I also love the level of fantasy in this one. Yeah. You know, so you could just get have a whimsical love story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fair. There is a lot of whimsy. I think that's a good yeah. word for it. And good chemistry, Casper McPhee yeah. and Mike Vogel. Totally. Really good. Yeah, so. she doesn't sing in it though. I don't know. That's yeah, true. It's a bummer, but you know, it's still fun. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Uh so what is your number six? My number six is Loving Leia. With, oh, uh, that stars, that coming up. Uh, yeah, Lauren Ambrosi, uh, Natasha Leone, Mercedes Rule, uh, Ricky Lake. Basically, uh, uh, Lauren, Amb- she, uh, Lauren Ambrosi, she plays uh, Leia, and she's part of an Orthodox uh, Jewish community. Her husband dies. Um, her brother-in-law comes to the wedding, and there's this old um, Jewish law where the brother-in-law has to marry his um his uh, uh, brother's widow if she's if she doesn't have any children and basically it's like oh it's a formality we do the ceremony you say no but he can't say no because he feels like that's a diss to his brother who he you know he wasn't as close to as he as he would like to and uh he's like no nope, i'll stay married to her and for a minute she's like excuse me but she takes this opportunity because she also wants to leave the restrictedness yeah. she wants to go to college and so she, she gets to do this by going with him but she's kind of a third wheel because he's a doctor and he's got uh and i can't remember if the girl well is a he nurse has or like another a doctor. another girlfriend at the time that's right but i can't remember if she's a nurse or a doctor yeah she's the third wheel in this and like i couldn't like she comes in and she's like what is going on here what do you mean you married your brother's wife you know so uh, you can't fault her for being what is going on here? yeah and then Ricky Lake pops out as a rabbi up in this. Yeah. And it's a very sweet movie about them falling in love when they go yeah. shopping for the ring. Yeah. Uh, also about, I guess, coming out of a shell. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but Leia starts to bloom when yeah. she gets to feel a sort of freedom. I mean, she's not rejecting her religion. She's not rejecting her upbringing. She just wants to to do something for herself and she's finally mm-hmm. able to do it but that doesn't mean she didn't love her husband or anything yeah. like that i think this has got to be on the list of one of the finest films hallmarks ever made yes it, absolutely it is, it is so really great. good so great yeah. it is so great i've got the dvd somewhere buried under there <laughs> me too <laughs> it's on a lot of streaming services and I the moms are really fun oh yes oh oh the mom <laughs> her mom is a matchmaker and she's yeah. like she's already like She's already talking, oh, the guy downstairs, you know, like from you or whatever. Um, It's so hard because when this happened to me too, I kind of like relate to now, like you've got to pack up and leave your apartment. A new family's got to go in. The same thing happened when my mom died. Like, what do you mean? I'm not ready to move. There's just so much on Leia's plate that 
she just goes along with this as a sort of way to escape and, and find yourself again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's so good. It's so yeah. good. And I can't believe I bought this love story because he's no shining prince. Like, no, no. Goes, I, I told you I was going to my brother's funeral. He goes to his government, but I married his wife. It's an old Jewish tradition. And she's like, excuse <laughs> me, you're not Jewish. Well, he was not practicing. Yeah. Yeah, but when uh, they they have their first kiss is oh, yeah. really good. Oh my gosh. And Mercedes Rule plays the mom and she, mm-hmm. when she's self-conscious at her son's funeral, like I think I might be underdressed. Like she looks totally fine, but it's yeah. so it's so believable how sad she is for her son's death, but also feeling so incredibly like an outsider within that Orthodox community. Um. Yeah, and a great example of telling a story about a community without feeling like you have to over-explain the community. Yes. Like we understand yeah. in just understand. a few yeah. little lines of dialogue what yeah. exactly is going on here, even if uh, yeah. we don't understand like the intricacies of the Talmud and the Absolutely. you know Jewish yeah. law. Like we don't need yeah. uh, all we need to know is what is happening to the characters and why it's impacting them. Totally, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's a great too. Like if you, I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> if this uh you know law or rule like is in practice or or whatever <laughs> but it's also a great look too into another culture and another religion yeah you know if you're like want to get a little bit out of your your bubble you know like because so we're all in our bubbles you know with sure. your friends or whatever and if you want to explore like another side like watch a movie like a nice romance movie about another culture another set of people how they live another religion this is a good start mm-hmm. yeah Well, my number five, I debated about putting on the list because I do think it's pretty much just your basic Hallmark movie, but it's so well done, uh, is Christmas with Holly is my number five. Oh, yes. This one's so sweet. It's so good. And like Sean Ferris and Elise Munford have amazing chemistry and uh, it's, it's your classic girl from the city moving to the, to the country, meeting the hometown hunk. Like yeah. there's nothing that original here, but it's just executed. It's an adorable well. child. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, of course, you know, <laughs> got like no parents or whatever and yeah. uncles. And so there's all those, it's also a Christmas movie, but oh yeah, with the title anyway, Christmas of Holly, duh. But like it has all the Christmas tropes, but it's not overly done and it's, it's really cute. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to watch a classic hallmark christmas movie that's totally. well done yeah this is this would be up there i think on um, one of the finer ones that they made yeah i think this would have been my 13 mm, mm-hmm. yeah i don't know anyone that doesn't like this movie no it's so fun it's, it's great. so good <laughs> eloise Mumford, right she's so good in it as well yeah yeah, yeah. uh all right what's your number five? Oh boy my number five i went all the way back to when i was a kid well oh, not wow. a kid well tweed whatever I went back to 1991. Now, I first watched this movie on Lifetime because back in the day when Lifetime started, they didn't have all this original content that they had. They just had a treasure trove of TV movies. This is not available on uh, any streaming or um, DVD or anything like that because of rights issues. But A Wonderful Soul did upload it on YouTube. So last time I looked, it was there. It's One Against the Wind. It stars uh, Judy Davis, Sam Neill. It has a very young Kate Beckinsale in it. It's set uh, during uh, World War II. It's also based on a true story. Um, Judy Davis plays somebody called Mary Lindell. um, She's a British woman who's been living in France since the end of the First World War because she was a nurse. She's a widow. She has two children. She has a son and Kate Beckinsale plays her daughter. And so she's still living in France when the Nazis occupy it. And she's like, this ain't right. So she starts to work. <laughs> she goes undercover and starts smuggling stuff for British and um, for the British and American. Uh, so she starts spying, not really spying, but she's doing smuggling stuff. And then she starts smuggling out wounded British and American soldiers. And she works with the church and she's doing this all secret. And then her daughter falls in love with a Nazi dude and she's disgusted and her son goes off to war. So she's worried about the war. She does help Sam Neill get out of the country. And eventually she gets caught by the, 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 she gets arrested by the Gestapo and she's beaten up. She's tortured. And somebody within the, uh, 
the somebody within the the Nazis and the Gestapo make it so that instead of dying, she goes on a train to go to a concentration camp. And uh, and he goes so like, this way you will live. They don't know much about the concentration camp, but they're trying to save her life. Mm-hmm. And this is amazing scene where she's like, you know what? Screw this. She jumps off the train, <laughs> gets badly hurt. Like the Nazis capture her again, but like this woman is a fighter. She ain't going down. She's yelling about anybody. So she does end up going to a concentration camp and gets reunited with Sam Neill, who she helped when he was shot and hurt and get smuggled out of the country. He hears a bossy lady going, no, no, she needs medical rights and and a doctor. And he goes, oh, my God, could it be Mary Linda? And it is her. So there's a sweet reunion between them. And there's a lot to this movie. It's just basically it's a war movie. It's dealing with spies. We've got terrible Nazis in this movie. And it is a very classic old school TV movie. So huh, I haven't heard of that I, one. That sounds really was, interesting. Yeah, this was one of the first ones I ever watched from like uh, this one and another one coming up. Yeah, from that I watched all the time mm-hmm. from Hallmark. This is what got me to love because I love those war movies and stuff like that. And yeah. it's great. It's a shame. It's not available anywhere because of rights. I don't know who owns it. I don't know if Warner Brothers owns it because Warner Brothers actually owns a lot of the Hallmark Hall of Fame from the 80s. So I don't know who owns this and it gets, you know, but some beautiful soul put it on YouTube. Hopefully it's still up there if anybody wants to check it out. Mm. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Well, my number four is one of the weepers. Uh, it's November Christmas. Oh, my number yes. four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, probably so much weeping in this episode. <laughs> yes, uh, probably one of the finest casts that they've ever had. Yeah, uh, for Hallmark, Sam Elliott, John Corbett, Sarah Paulson, Karen Allen, the list goes on and on about this girl getting cancer, and her uh, her father decides that they're going to celebrate all of the holidays while they have the chance, uh, and and uh, before she before she passes away and uh and you have sam elliott's who's been kind of this recluse coming out of the woodwork to help make this happen for this little girl and uh, it's just very very sweet very and hopeful sweet. and uh it it's uh, they do let you know at the beginning it's not quite as sad as it could otherwise be right. <laughs> yes because you have to be careful with these these children are sick movies yeah essentially yeah it's true but it is but great it's very heartwarming it's, as well it's really good uh and just the acting alone to yeah. me gives it a pretty big bump oh, it, it's just revisiting these movies like i wish we could go back here you know? mm-hmm. yeah uh what do you have it for uh another movie that you know some beautiful soul put on youtube i went all the way back to nine, 1992 this one is miss rose white it stars kira sedwick uh, uh amanda plummer Maximilian Schell, Maureen Stapleton, a very young Gina Gershon, D.B. Sweeney, like classic stars. It's also, uh, it's also based on, uh, I'm sorry, it's based on a play. It's a period piece. It's like late 40s New York. Kira Sedwick uh, is, is, her name is uh, Raisel Weiss, but she goes by Rose White. She sort of hides that she's Jewish. And she's working at a department store. She's like, a, she buys clothes. She's trying to raise under ranks. And she thinks if I pass off, you know, as a regular old person who's rose white with a simple American name, I can get far. And she's struggling with her roots and her identity and her father. 
And one day her father just calls her up out of the blue going, wonderful news. We found your sister. So when she was very young, the father took her and her sister and they traveled to America. Staying behind was her mother and her other sister played by Amanda Plummer. And um, they stayed behind. They were supposed to come back to travel to America at another time, but the Nazis occupied Poland and they were sent to concentration camps. And they find out that her sister survived. So she has no, she doesn't know her sister. She has no memory from when she was a child. But the father's like, eh, she'll live with you. And and she's like, but I have work. I have a life. I'm dating this guy. And so she has to go pick up her sister um, and wait in lines for her to go through all this Red Cross stuff. And it's such an awkward reunion. And it's also a wonderful story about sisters reconnecting, but also about accepting the past. And part of the reason that she's so hesitant is because she's mad at her father. He's like, I lost a mom and I lost a sister. You took too long to send for them. And he's trying to tell her it's not her fault. And of course, her sister has her own struggles with trying to forgive her father and really the trauma of surviving a concentration camp and losing her mom. And it's a beautiful story about family, forgiveness, religion, um, and just accepting one as their true self instead of trying mm-hmm. to pass off as somebody else. That wonderful cast really good. yeah this is on youtube last i checked i looked like <laughs> yesterday it was still on there but this is we've got so many gems that are lost because of rights mm-hmm. um but this is one of the first ones i constantly watch this i think i taped this off of like time with a vhs you know i put my blank vhs in because i man uh rachel what a child what a t- tween i was <laughs> tv movies off with my vhs i was a weird one no one else was doing that and i was like wait wait i got a program wait, wait, I got oh we were definitely Duke doing movie. that too. yeah i was like stop it like i have to go home press record on this Duke movie, and i'll be right back um well, i know i i would always make sure i uh taped whatever was the special uh in the t- t- pbs telethon Oh yes, Usually yeah. like the uh, 10th anniversary Les Mis concert because yeah. now it always get taped over and so every year uh, I'd make sure I recorded it. Oh, you would extend <laughs> those tapes to maximum uh to yeah. like the maximum length so you could get like a number. I had like like four or five TV movies on them. Mm-hmm. And I would be so upset if they got damaged, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when TV, this was the beauty. I snatched up so many old TV movies when they first started coming out on DVD. I didn't even care how terrible they looked because they weren't fixed. That was a beautiful thing. I still treasure them because they're all gone now. You can't find them anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you to the beautiful souls who upload those on YouTube because yes, I have you. gone down many rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> and I should say, we have a special episode of Christmas Classics that's going to be coming out soon uh where thaddeus and i we look at the first three hallmark christmas movies we've already recorded it uh hallmark hall of fame christmas movies going all the way back to 1969 and the little wow. angel and it's a it's 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 a trip uh, are those like <laughs> available like on dvd or anything or um yeah the little angel is available on streaming believe it or not nice. and it is wild nice. um and then <laughs> <laughs> and i would then, love yeah um the, uh, oh, shoot what's it? it is from 1977 it's have i got a christmas for you uh which is available on youtube and then uh one called stubby pringles christmas from 1978 <laughs> that is also it's considered a lost film but you can find wow. uh you know a copy of a copy of a copy on youtube yeah i'll take uh, it and so you'll we all will look forward to it's a really fun episode oh, of class. Bless those people who put this up on YouTube because yeah. these are lost for, for ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, so my number three is uh season for miracles. Yeah. I think if you're looking for a Hallmark movie that's the emotional Hallmark movie, but has all of those feels of community and uh and love and christmas and everything like i don't know how you you could find a finer one than this one uh it's it is it goes to places they would never go now like the totally yeah lard dern 
playing this sister in prison and is just so manipulative and terrible and Carla Gugino trying to like save these these children and and uh you got Patty Duke as this kind of angel kind of sort of character uh you have Mae Whitman giving one of the most devastating child performances I've seen in a yeah. long time as uh, when she's testifying uh it's completely devastating and it, this just in like some people would say oh it's emotionally manipulative or whatever but like in my opinion you can do emotionally manipulative yeah. and do it well and that's this is the case here this is how to do it if you want to make this kind of story this is how you do it yeah i haven't seen this one in years but mm. it is uh there used to be a trend for um holiday movies and stuff like that where they were especially when I was a kid we don't do this anymore where they were really sh- going through some stuff it was like are we supposed to be happy and a lot of times it's not and mm-hmm. um it definitely goes back to that one what do you have at three my number three is Skylark which is the sequel to Sarah mm-hmm. Plain and Tall stars Glenn Close Christopher Walken based on based on is a this the one where books. she visits her sister yes Okay. Uh, so like Jacob and Sarah are married in this one it's a sequel but um, they're living happy with you know the kids but there's a drought and that brings a lot of stress she's seeing her friends and her family move away and eventually Jacob is like go back home to Maine take the kids and and I'm gonna wait it out you know see what happens and so she goes, so there's like, they're, they're, like in the first movie, they write letters to each other and they're writing letters again to each other. And Sarah finds out she's pregnant in this movie and then it ends well, you know, rain happens. I mean, it's wonderful. If you love the Sarah Plain and Tall books, I think you'll love the movies. And this was, um, these movies were the first time I ever saw Christopher Walken play like a good guy when I was younger because I used to always just watch the movies where I was like man Christopher Walken and he's always playing these shady guys and then when I saw him in this movie I was like whoa you know like I'd never seen him like this before at that point but I think these movies are so charming they're period pieces but they're so well done and uh, Glenn close like you could stare at her face and her reactions all day long yeah i mean i you'll see where i have the the original but um yeah. uh but uh yeah they're they're such a it's such a weird combination you never would think glenn close exactly and Walken, yeah but, but they work it but works they work so well. really well <laughs> yeah and i yeah. love the books as well and mm-hmm. i think they're good adaptations as well i mean the book is is very short very they're all short all of those books mm-hmm. are short but yeah. i think that it really takes the spirit of it and and uh, it's a good adaptation yeah, they did a lot with a little i believe oh she at least for the first movie i think she wrote the screenplay herself the author oh yeah yeah i think so yeah well okay. my number two is loving leah so we talked yeah. about that i think it's just one of the finest it is. It's wonderful. rom-coms of its type that they've yeah. done it's it's great yeah. uh so what's your number two my number two is the magic of ordinary days okay yeah yeah excellent all right well my number one is uh sarah plain at all uh, same, I, same. <laughs> that's this amazing the we have the same classic one. and the just it stands above all else on hallmark hall of fame for me mm-hmm. it's so great it's yeah so i mean like i said i never would have thought to put these two actors together yeah. but it really 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 works and you you have a petulant teen that isn't <laughs> yes. uh that works for me which yeah. is a hard well, archetype I mean, for me she's been having to be sort of the the, the head woman in that family mm-hmm. at such a young age helping with her brother helping with her father mm-hmm. you know her mother's gone i mean it's kind of hard to see who's this yeah. lady from like a fancy place coming in and you know moving out of my territory yeah so her and and in a fear that she's going to be abandoned again yeah. a lack yeah. of trust so it makes sense and her arc works it's not like unreasonable like a lot of these petulant teen characters yes um and uh and so yeah beautifully made uh it feels yeah, like a feature stunning. there's this oh it does but there's this stunning too where like uh glenn close is in the barn 
And I think it's just a close up of her face. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't think she's ever looked as stunning as she does in that close up. Mm -hmm. I think she's just like, I mean, this movie's perfect to me. It looks great. You're right. It could have been a movie movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you could have gone to paid money to go see this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Definitely. Great. That's great. That's amazing that we have the same number one. Yeah. This happens I so had much. no doubt. Rachel, I had no doubt that we would both have this movie at number one. I <laughs> yeah. just I was like, who doesn't? Right. You know, like yeah. I tell everybody, if you haven't seen these movies, watch them. They're great. It's a trilogy. Yeah. There's a third yeah. movie. It's not the third movie isn't that great, but it still has the greatness of Glenn Close and Christopher Walken and it, oh, the whole cast returns. So you're very familiar with these characters and it's just a nice little continuation of it. Mm-hmm. but they're wonderful stories yeah, yeah yeah and read the books they're very like have your kids read them they're great yeah like, they are they are children's books they're very short like you they're can get through short. them in one in a day, sitting. In a day. no yeah. problem but before we do let's let's share what our patrons had to say uh so we have uh alicia lomas gross she says <laughs> oh, excuse me so alicia lomas gross says loving leah uh becky Schopner says sarah plain and tall um, Patrick Gibbons Barton, uh, or sorry, Patricia Gibbons Barton says Fallen Angel, uh, Christmas yes, Love Story. Very good. Love Takes Flight, Love Locks, which I actually had pretty high. I enjoyed that. Um, Loving Leah, One Christmas Eve. I do love that. That was on. Yeah, that was fun. That too. was pretty high for me. And A Heavenly Christmas. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, Ronnie Audi says Christmas Love Story and Riding the Bus with My Sister. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's the one with Rosie O'Donnell. And mm-hmm. uh, I do remember when that one came out. Everybody yeah. was just. Uh, um, so Steve, something, guys. <laughs> Steve Hahn, he says, I barely seen any of them, but in my notes, I have a heavenly Christmas. I really liked it. My note was extremely sweet. Love yeah. takes flight. I liked it, though. My only note was he is a cowboy who takes excessive risk and won't take a just direct order. She just oh. finally fires him, but everyone tells her she's wrong. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, fair um love locks right. just okay christmas love song just okay for him oh i forgot about love locks mm-hmm. that one didn't bother me that much that, yeah, that one's was kind of sweet yeah it's kind of fun they're like a real yeah. couple true they had chemistry uh, too showed on screen yeah yeah um so thaddeus says loving leah mm-hmm. and then michelle benson she shared her list and it's uh the russell girl number one uh just uh just in time for christmas yeah. Uh, boy choir the lost valentine magic of ordinary days loving leah heavenly christmas christmas in conway my sister's keeper christmas with holly a smile as big as the moon and the love letter yeah i do remember there was a controversy with boy choir i don't know if it's still officially a hallmark hall of fame movie oh okay but i did I'm... miss it so i don't know what it's about but yeah I've never but i do it. remember there was a scuffling there might be a rights issue i don't know Mm -hmm. well there we go so if you want to participate in our rankings episodes make sure you become a patron because we post the short lists every single week and so you get a chance to add your uh, opinions to these rankings so please 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 check out the patreon and you you get a ton of other great benefits and uh terry where can people find you uh at twitter at flurry heaven and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure that you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. It helps people find the podcast. And then we also have, uh, and then also if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Most of our viewers on YouTube are not subscribers. So if you're in that camp, please subscribe. It really helps the algorithm a lot and we sure appreciate it. And like I said, we have the patron group. Please take a look at that. And uh, we have the merch store, which has tons of Hallmark inspired merch. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much. It's always a blast. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.